When Tier decided it would get into the performance running shoe market, it didn't just make a racing shoe, it made a training companion as well. Using the same beaded Piba midsole, but with a nylon plate, this is the Tier Valkyrie Speedworks. And it's time to take it for a run. Yo, what's going on? My name is Kofuzi and I'm a not elite runner who reviews running shoes here on YouTube. And today I'm gonna talk to you guys all about the new Tier Valkyrie Speedworks. Before I get to my thoughts on this shoe though, I do wanna go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that Tier sent to me for the purpose of review so I do not have to pay for these shoes. However, nobody's paying me to make this video or to include their shoe in this video and no one's gonna get a chance to preview any of my footage or my thoughts before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. So with that disclosure out of the way, let's talk about the Tier Valkyrie Speedworks and let's start with the specs. This is a 39.5 millimeter stack height shoe with a six millimeter drop giving us 33.5 millimeters of stack height in the forefoot. In this midsole, we have two main components. We have the beaded P-backs and that comes in two layers, a top and bottom layer. And in between those two layers is a nylon plate. Now the notable thing about this nylon plate is that it doesn't have any wings or other structural support elements to it. And those features are typically added to make a nylon plate more rigid and more stable. Uh, but this nylon plate doesn't have any of those support structures. Moving to the outsole, we have similar rubber coverage as we see in the Elite Carbon, it's just different color of rubber. We have a large chunk of it in the forefoot with lots of holes and channels cut through so you can still see the midsole through it. And then we have two strips of rubber on each side of the heel with an exposed portion of foam and a window in into the rigid member inside the shoe, which in this case is that wingless nylon plate. On the upper, we have a change from what we saw in the racing sibling to this shoe. We have Tears Alpha Weave, which is more of a daily training style upper and doesn't have the overlays that the racing version of this shoe has. It's still a very breathable material, but it's a little bit more forgiving and it looks like it's gonna be able to handle the rigors of daily training a little bit better than a racing upper might. The tongue is gusseted and has a light amount of padding to it, but otherwise it's very similar to the setup that we see in the Elite Carbon. And in the heel cup, I feel like it's pretty much the exact same, a very light amount of padding and a moderately stiff heel cup in the back. The upper fit true to size for me, I went with my normal running shoe size and Tier tells us that they have an anatomical toe box so there shouldn't be any squishing of the toes like you might find in some other running shoes. Altogether this shoe comes in at a light weight of 8.1 ounces or 230 grams. Now that we've gone over the paper specs, let's talk about what happens when you actually go running in this shoe. And I feel like this shoe is a lot of fun to run in. Beaded Piba always gets me excited because I like the sensation of having that material underfoot and the Tier Valkyrie Speedworks is no exception. It's an extremely nimble shoe. It's an exciting shoe that has a lot of impact absorption. It squishes down when you step on it, but it bounces back really nicely at a variety of paces. I particularly enjoy this shoe at easy pace because it's very comfortable. It doesn't have those stability elements that a lot of other shoes kind of in this category and class are trying to kind of shoehorn into their models. Without having wings on that nylon plate, I do feel like the shoe is a much more neutral shoe. It's a little bit kind of floppy, but in a way that I feel is very natural and lets my foot do what it wants to do as it's trying to run. And so the Tier Valkyrie Speedworks avoids some of the trends that we've seen in a lot of shoes for 2024, where it becomes a little bit more stable and a little bit more clunky at easy paces. This shoe is one of the best implementations of beaded p foam that I've seen in a daily trainer. But it also picks up the pace really well. Beaded Piba has that characteristic where the more you put into it with each stride, the more it gives back. So that nice pleasant sensation at easy paces of squish and spring becomes even springier the faster that you're going into it. It is a pleasant amount of bounce and life that it has every time you are picking up the pace, whether you're going for a few strides or you're putting in a workout for your marathon training. 
And another thing that I noticed when I started picking the pace in the Valkyrie Speedworks is that it seems to become a lighter shoe the faster I want to go in it. It almost seems to shrink on foot and feels very slipper-like as I'm running quickly. So that sense of neutralness that I'm getting at easy paces really turns into something that molds to my foot and becomes just a part of me as I'm running faster, which I found to be very enjoyable. The one downside that I've noticed in this shoe though, is that it feels like there's a lot less foam in this forefoot than it appears. And I don't know if it's the shape of the rocker or the use of a nylon plate in the forefoot, but it just feels like it goes from a really nice, healthy amount of stack height in the heel and the midfoot. But then once I get to the forefoot, it feels like a lot of it just kind of tapers away. And so I'd like to ideally get a little bit more sensation of that beaded piba way up in the toes of the shoe. But I also think that's really where the Valkyrie Elite Carbon comes in. Even though this shoe seems to have a very similar, if not identical geometry to it, there's just something about the Valkyrie Elite Carbon, and I'm thinking that it might be the carbon fiber plate, that gives it a little bit more substance in the forefoot, and I get a little bit more of a sense of that rocker design when I'm running it in the Elite Carbon which makes it very well suited for racing. And so the way I think about it, it could be a downside to the Valkyrie Speedworks, but it also just goes to show that there is a very sensible reason to upgrade from the Valkyrie Speedworks to the Elite Carbon when you're thinking about these two shoes as a race day shoe and then as a training companion to the race day shoe. There's a very clear delineation for me between these two shoes. Now let's get to the end part of the video where we talk about some pairing options and some alternatives that you might wanna consider as we get to the buying guide. Now, if you're picking up the Valkyrie Speedworks, I'm thinking you're gonna be picking it up as a daily trainer, something that you can use even for recovery runs because that beaded Piba foam is really comfy, but also something for light workouts. And so the first shoe that I'm gonna to recommend to compare with that is the one we've already been talking about, and that is the Valkyrie Elite Carbon. There's a nice transition from the Speedworks to the Carbon that really makes a lot of sense to me. And even though on paper, these two shoes look very similar, there is a difference that you're going to appreciate come race day. And then the other shoe that I think would be interesting to pair with these two would be something that is in the short and fast category, and that's going to be the Saucony Sinister. This is another beaded Piba foam from Saucony and not Tear, so we're leaving the Tear group for just a moment here. And this is a shoe that's very neutral, very floppy. There's no plate in here at all, just racing super foam and a featherweight upper. This is one of the lightest shoes that you can buy right now. So if you're heading to the track or if you've got something that's going to be long burning fast, then I feel like the Saucony Sinister is going to be really fun to work with all three of these shoes together, sprint in into a rotation. Now let's talk about the buying guide for this shoe. The tier Valkyrie Speedwork comes in at $170 and that is a lot of money, but the question is, is it expensive? Let's take a look at some of the competition to see where this price stacks up. The first shoe that I'm going to compare it to is something that's very similar on paper to the Valkyrie Speedworks, and that is the Endorphin Speed 4. Both of these shoes have nylon plates and beaded Piba foams paired with a generous amount of rubber on the outsole and a daily trainer style upper. Both of these shoes are really fantastic. The main difference is that the Endorphin Speed 4 has a winged nylon plate, so it's a little bit more rigid, and it also has a little bit more stability features. It's wider through the middle of the foot. It's got a big chunky heel as well. There's also a little bit more pop in that forefoot. And so it has a little bit more in the front than the tier of Valkyrie Speedworks tends to have. But I would use both of these two shoes in the same way. And the Saucony Endorphin Speed 4 comes in at the same price of $170. Now the other shoe that I think is worth considering is another beaded Pebax foam shoe. And that's from Topo. And this is the Topo Cyclone 2. This shoe has slightly less stack height than the tier of Valkyrie Speedworks works and it also foregoes the nylon plate. So it's an even more neutral shoe and it has an even more foot friendly toe box in here. That's one of Topo's specialties. So the fit is really fantastic and it's a very lightweight shoe. This is a shoe that I think is pretty good for easy running, but I prefer it more for some of that easy plus to workouts type of uses. So it's a little bit more speed oriented than the Speedworks 
is, but the Topo Cyclone 2 comes in at $150, so you're saving quite a bit of money to get to the Topo Cyclone 2. But those are my thoughts on the Tier Valkyrie Speedworks. Two for two from Tier for the year in terms of their performance running product. Really excited to see this newcomer to the performance running space doing so well so quickly. If you have any other questions about the Tier Speedworks, let me know in the comments down below, or better yet, stop at the live tonight I do Monday through Friday over the Kofuzi Run Club channel. I'd love to talk to you guys over there in the chat. That's all for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of this video. Hopefully you guys are staying safe out there on your runs, and I'll see you in the next one. Yo, what's going on?